Conspiracy theories are a dime a dozen on the internet, and in recent years there seems to have been a resurgence of posts regarding this subject. While many of these theories have been discussed at length, there are a few that aren't as well known, but that have still piqued the interest of many conspiracy theorists. Number 10. At about 1 a.m. on the 2nd of September, 1666, the Great Fire of London broke out in Pudding Lane in a bakery owned by Thomas Foreigner, and it would rage on for a further five days before it was finally doused. As many as 100,000 people lost their homes and about a third of London burned after a spark from Foreigner's oven is thought to have fallen onto some fuel that was left nearby, and the event is still widely discussed today. These are the facts about the Great Fire of London as we know them, since these are the reports that were printed at the time. But conspiracy theorists aren't so sure that they tell the whole story, as many strange theories about the fire have emerged in recent years. Freemasons are very often the targets of these types of theories, and as outlandish as it may sound, conspiracy theorists believe they played a major part in the fire, with some people claiming that they may have started it on purpose. When the fire was finally put out for good, according to these theorists, the Freemasons immediately started planning London's reconstruction, including that of St. Paul's Cathedral. Architect Christopher Wren is said to have been a Freemason, and given his occupation, many people are now suspicious that he and a few fellow Masons started the fire to profit from the rebuilding of the city. There's also the suggestion that Nostradamus may have predicted the fire as he's noted of having written the following prophecy, saying, quote, The blood of the just will be demanded of London. Burnt by fire in the year 66, the ancient lady will fall from her high place, and many of the same sect will be killed. Then there's the theory that the wrong person was blamed for the fire, and that the woman who neglected to put the bakery's ovens out properly, as we've been taught, was actually just used as a scapegoat. We'll never know whether this is true, since she was the first person to perish in the fire, and therefore couldn't defend herself against these claims. Conspiracy theories about the fire aren't a modern thing, however, as people started speculating about who was responsible when it was still ablaze, with some people suggesting that it was the work of Dutch and French immigrants who set the fire as an act of revenge against the English, who had attacked Wester Schelling in the Netherlands just a few weeks earlier. Unfortunately, these theories resulted in many immigrants being assaulted by Coldstream guards who were serving in the British Army, rather than focusing their efforts on dousing the flames. But not all of these theories are negative. Though it has been proven to be false, one theory claims that the Great Plague would have endured were it not for the fire, since it got rid of the rats and fleas that caused it. In a similar vein, some people have suggested that the fire was actually started by a rat that spontaneously combusted but there is, of course, no way of ever proving that this was the case. Lastly, it was suggested that the fire was started by the order of King Charles II, as he was bitter about the fact that Londoners showed support for the Parliament during the Civil War. And conspiracy theorists often point to the fact that the fire stopped before it reached the King's court at Whitehall. While it's almost certain that we have the actual facts about the fire, it's even more likely that it will forever be the subject of conspiracy theories. Number 9. Conspiracy theories about Area 51 in Groom Lake, Nevada are so plentiful that it's almost impossible to read about the facility without at least a few popping up. And considering that the base is associated by most people as having something to do with extraterrestrials, it will remain the subject of speculation for as long as it's kept a secret from the public eye. This secrecy is what intrigues those who are interested in Area 51 since they feel that anything that's hidden from them by the government must point to something nefarious going on, despite the military stating that it's merely a flight testing facility. But the base has also been the site of many unexplained sightings of strange craft and lights in the sky, leading many people to believe that it's actually being used to store extraterrestrial craft that crash-landed on our planet, that alien technology is being tested and developed there, or even that extraterrestrial beings are being kept at the facility with some theorists claiming that these beings are working alongside the U.S. government. These claims were only further exacerbated by a man called Rob Lazar, who came forward to state that he was once employed at the base and that he saw photos of these alien beings. And while these claims were initially just trashed, many people still believed that he was being truthful. 
As for the strange sightings, the military has brushed these claims off, explaining that the craft and lights are the result of flight testing of different military aircraft. And they've repeatedly stated that the base has never had anything to do with extraterrestrials or their craft. These theories were so widely accepted that there was once a plan for members of the public to storm the base, thanks to a meme that went viral on the internet. And in response, the US military stated that it would defend the base by any means necessary, if this plan was ever carried out, handing conspiracy theorists yet another avenue to explore. They claimed that if the area was merely a military base, then there would be no need to be so secretive about it. But the fact of the matter is that overhead espionage technology is being developed at the site, and to keep these technologies from falling into the wrong hands, some degree of secrecy is definitely warranted. Many people have tried to infiltrate the base by sneaking in, since they wanted to see for themselves what was going on in the facility. But security at Area 51 is incredibly tight, and no solid proof of the presence of aliens or extraterrestrial craft has ever been presented. It's understandable that when something is shrouded in secrecy, people feel the inherent need to find out what it's actually about, and when they're unable to do so, they begin to speculate, which is certainly true about Area 51. Conspiracy theorists seem incapable of accepting the fact that they're not entitled to view sensitive military information, or that this information is being kept from them with good reason, and there's no doubt that theories about Area 51 will continue for a long time to come. Number 8. John Dillinger is regarded as one of America's most infamous criminals, as he started getting into trouble from the time that he was 16, when he went AWOL from his position in the US Navy. On the 6th of September, 1924, he and Ed Singleton decided to carry out a robbery, during which Dillinger assaulted Frank Morgan, the owner of the grocers that they were robbing, and luckily Morgan didn't suffer any serious injuries. But he was quickly arrested and sent to the Indian State Reformatory, after which he was found guilty and sentenced to serve between 10 and 20 years in prison. Singleton got off more lightly, receiving a sentence of 2 to 14 years. While he was in prison, Dillinger's wife, Beryl, decided to file for divorce since she didn't want to be married to a convicted felon, and it's said that he was distraught by the news and strangely, he then asked to be sent to a harsher prison, Indiana State Prison where some of the more hardened criminals were serving time. In 1933, he would be granted parole since his stepmother was unwell. At this time, he'd been transferred to the Michigan City Prison, and by the time he made it to his stepmother, he found that he was too late and she'd already passed away. Less than a month after being released on parole, he robbed a bank in Ohio, making his getaway with $10,600. He would go on to carry out several more robberies before he was again arrested in September of the same year. But he would escape with the aid of three men, who had themselves escaped just a month earlier. He would commit many more crimes, and he would escape prison again later. But on the 22nd of July, 1934, his luck finally ran out when his life was ended by special agents at the Biograph Theater, located in Chicago. He was then buried at the Crown Hill Cemetery in Indianapolis, but many conspiracy theorists believe that this was merely a ruse, and that it wasn't actually Dillinger who was buried there. These claims have been echoed by some of his relatives, who stated that they have proof that it wasn't him. It's stated that Dillinger underwent plastic surgery to hide from the authorities, and that the man whose life was ended that day was actually a doppelganger. These claims stem from the claims that he did at one point undergo plastic surgery and attempted to have his fingerprints removed. His relatives even suggested that the grave be exhumed to check whether it was Dillinger who was buried there, but these plans fell through thanks to several lawsuits that would have likely followed. When asked why his relatives subscribed to this theory, they stated that certain details about the burial don't add up. These include the fact that the person buried that day didn't have the same eye color as Dillinger. They've also pointed out that Dillinger's ears were a different shape, and that the fingerprints didn't match, that Dillinger had a differently shaped forehead, and that his anterior teeth didn't match those of the person that was buried. Even though Dillinger and his gang were hardened criminals, he's still seen as somewhat of a folk hero, since he brought a sense of adventure to the imaginations of members of the public. But whether he really lost his life that day remains a matter of speculation. Number 7. If you've ever been bothered by a mosquito while you're trying to sleep, you'll know just how irritating a continuous sound can be, 
but imagine that sound being much louder and lasting for a much longer time. Then you'll begin to understand the frustrations of people around the world who've become aware of a strange hum that they're unable to explain. One video that was uploaded to YouTube in 2018 captured this mysterious hum when it was heard in Minneapolis by a man named Melvin Rustin. The high-pitched sound can be clearly heard in the video, and no one has been able to definitively explain it. But the same type of sound has been heard in other parts of the country, such as at Taos, New Mexico, and other parts of the world including Bristol in England and a town in Scotland. When the hum was heard in Durham, England, it was likened to the sound of an engine idling for hours on end. While many investigations have been carried out as far afield as Australia, it seems that there's no plausible explanation. Kevin Fail from Durham described the hum as more of a buzz and he compared it to the sound of overhead power lines. And while he and his wife heard the sound regularly, other residents of the area seemed oblivious to it. He speculated that it may have something to do with a disused mine shaft that runs beneath his house. But conspiracy theorists have their own ideas. They've suggested that the sound may have something to do with extraterrestrials, though they've been unable to state how the two are related. Then there's the theory that it's the result of the modern age and that the hum is the result of machinery that's kept running 24 hours a day. The hum heard in Scotland left people baffled for a long time, as did the sound heard in Bristol. And while the sources were never identified, people find it strange that the sound would suddenly stop, only to start once again a short while later. It's been suggested that people who are susceptible to the sound may be suffering from tinnitus, but most of them are adamant that there's nothing wrong with their hearing and that the hum must be the result of something they're unaware of. Strangely, the sound is often heard by people between the ages of 50 and 60, though it isn't certain what the statistic points to, since this group isn't exclusive in being affected by it. In the 1970s, 800 people wrote to the News of the World newspaper to complain about the hum, with some of them stating that they were certain it was the result of some kind of extraterrestrial activity. And despite thorough investigations being launched, the source of the noise was never identified. Some people think that once a person hears a hum for the first time, they become so focused on it that they're unable to block it out and soon become obsessed with it due to it being so irritating. The phenomenon has become so well known that a researcher named Glenn McPherson has created a global hum map that shows all the locations where the noise has been heard. He did so after hearing the hum for himself for the first time in 2012. No explanation for this hum has ever been found. And although people have been reassured that extraterrestrials aren't responsible, many conspiracy theorists maintain their stance that there may be something underhanded going on. Number six. Next, we return once again to the world of Freemasonry and the belief that its members know things that the rest of us don't. It's a rumor that's been around for a very long time, and a cave in Burns, Oregon has only added fuel to these claims. The cave is a lava tube known as Malheur Cave, and it lies about 17 miles from Crystal Crane Hot Springs. In the past, the 3,000-foot tube was utilized by Native Americans and the early settlers, but today it serves as the perfect catalyst for a number of conspiracy theories. It's a known fact that the cave has been used by Freemasons to hold meetings, as the idea was first suggested in 1938 by Ulysses S. Hackney and Charles W. Loggett, both of whom were members of the Robert Burns Masonic Lodge. The suggestion was accepted and the first meeting in the cave took place on the 1st of October the following year. Since then, meetings have been held there every year up until 2019, when the cave was officially closed. But there are still many theories as to what went on in the cave during these meetings. Native American tribes had their own theories about the Malheur Cave, long before the Masons had anything to do with it, as they believed that it served as a passage to the underworld. Some Native Americans stated that the cave was home to, quote, different people who owned deer and horses while living there. They claimed that these inhabitants looked just like we do, but they aren't human, since they didn't have mouths and instead ate using their nostrils. That may sound rather far-fetched, but more modern theories tend to be just as outlandish. One of the most common theories that's often presented is that the Freemasons used the cave for satanic rituals, 
and that these were performed in the cave to keep members of the public from finding out about their dark practices. No evidence has ever been found that this was the case, but one would imagine that if these kinds of rituals were really being performed, not much evidence would be left behind, since they are, after all, meant to be secret. Other conspiracy theorists have suggested that this cave is only a small section of a much larger tunnel system that stretches beneath all the United States, and that they're used by Freemasons to travel to other caves that are also owned by the secret society. As for what goes on during the meetings in these caves, other than satanic rituals, some people are convinced that the Freemasons are part of a group of people who run the world, and that they have a major influence on global events, many of which are said to be carefully orchestrated. In order to keep these meetings as secret as possible, they use these tunnels to keep out of sight, thereby making it impossible for anyone to prove that they have the amount of power that these conspiracy theories claim they do. Unless you're a Freemason, you'll never find out what truly happens at their meetings. And while people are free to speculate, none of these claims have ever been proven as correct. Today, the cave is no longer accessible as it's been closed up with a large metal gate, and whatever was done inside will remain a mystery forever. Number 5. One of the first things that comes to mind at the mention of conspiracy theories is the moon landing that took place on the 16th of July, 1969 since as many as 6% of Americans believe that it didn't actually happen, and that it was all just a clever ruse by the US government. Those who subscribe to this theory think that the landing was faked to make it seem as though the US reached the moon before the Soviets were able to, and that the subsequent missions to the moon were also fabricated. While many of these theories don't mention who was responsible for this deception, there's one that accuses the well-known film director, Stanley Kubrick, as the one who was tasked with pulling the wool over the eyes of not only the American public, but the entire world. While no proof exists that the landings were faked or that Kubrick was involved, it is likely, according to researchers, that conspiracy theorists were looking for someone to name as a scapegoat, and when tasked with finding someone with the knowledge to fake the type of footage that was needed, one name stood out. Kubrick had released his film at 2001 A Space Odyssey, the year before the moon landing took place, and hence he would be the perfect candidate to create imagery of the moon that most people would willingly accept as real. When the movie was released, people were amazed at the scenery that they saw. Because of this, it was easy for them to be convinced that Kubrick would be able to create a fake moon, and to suggest the conditions that may be found there. It's thought that the theory came to be because people were skeptical about NASA's ability to land a craft, much less a person, on the moon and they've suggested that Kubrick only agreed to film the fake landing because he was being paid a lot of money, or because he was a patriot who wanted to see the Americans triumph over the Soviets. Others have suggested that the government had information about the director that he didn't want made public, and so he had no choice but to comply with their blackmail. They've even suggested that he has hidden certain references to this in one of his most famous movies, the horror masterpiece called The Shining. The movie is an adaptation of a Stephen King novel, in which one of the haunted rooms in the Overlook Hotel is number 217, but in the movie, Kubrick changed it to room 237. Given that the moon is 237,000 miles from Earth, conspiracy theorists took this as a hidden message that he was indeed involved in the faked footage. As the movie continues, a massive snowstorm engulfs the hotel, and it's said that this was Kubrick's reference to the Cold War. It's eventually revealed that Jack Nicholson's character, Jack Torrance, had been writing the same line, all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy, on his typewriter over and over again. Conspiracy theorists claim that the all in this sentence refers to A11, as in Apollo 11, and that one of the other characters, Danny, who can be seen wearing a sweater containing a rocket and the words Apollo 11, is meant to represent the rocket that travels to the moon, or room 237. And since he finds that the room's door is locked, Kubrick was suggesting that the rocket never really made it there. Kubrick's daughter, Vivian, has stated on many occasions that these claims are nothing short of laughable, but she's not been able to convince some conspiracy theorists who remain adamant that we may never have been to the moon. Number 4. Soccer, or football as it's known in most of the world, is the most popular sport in existence as people all over the world follow their favorite teams in countless leagues that are held across the globe each year. The only sport that comes anywhere close to rivaling it is cricket, which also has billions of fans. 
but every four years, fans of the sport reach a fever pitch when the Soccer World Cup rolls around, and it's still credited today as being the biggest sporting event in existence, as more than 5 billion people tune in to watch the matches while they're being played. Needless to say, the tournament is responsible for a lot of money exchanging hands. In, in the past, certain officials have been ousted for corruption, and conspiracy theorists believe that deception goes much deeper than most of us realize. One of the most prominent theories centers around one particular match, the 1998 World Cup Final that was played between Brazil and France, two heavyweights in the soccer world. The Brazilian team was the reigning champion as they were victorious in the 1994 edition of the tournament and hence they were the overwhelming favorites to lift the cup once again. One of their most talented players, Ronaldo Nazario de Lima, better known simply as Ronaldo, would be playing in the final, and Brazilian fans were certain that their team would leave the tournament as victors. But then something happened that sent conspiracy theorists into a frenzy. Just hours before the final was set to kick off, the Brazilian team had lunch, after which they traveled back to their hotel. Once there, according to Ronaldo's roommate, Roberto Carlos, the famous striker broke down in tears, stating that the pressure being put on him to perform by Brazilian fans had gotten the better of him and that he was worried he might let them down. It was understandable that he felt apprehensive, but at around 4 p.m. things got worse. Carlos called for help when he realized that Ronaldo was in the midst of a seizure, and it was noted that he was foaming at the mouth. Doctors came to his aid and he eventually fell asleep. The decision was made to not tell Ronaldo what had happened, but one of his teammates would eventually tell him that he had experienced a seizure. The Brazilian team now had to come to terms that one of their star players would not be on the pitch to contest the final, when they realized that his name had been omitted from the team sheet. But 40 minutes before the kickoff, Ronaldo was suddenly declared fit to play. He was a shadow of his former self, clearly still feeling the effects of the seizure, and France would emerge as the new world champions leading to several conspiracy theories as to what actually happened. Many people have pointed out that Ronaldo would have been more than used to the kind of pressure that he was feeling that day, since he'd been playing in the World Cup since he was 17 years old. But it is suggested that he was suffering from a condition that he kept secret from team doctors, and that medication that he was taking for a previous injury had caused him to have a reaction that he did in the subsequent seizure. Then there's the more obvious theory that the Brazilian team had been offered money, as much as $15 million to lose the final. It's also been suggested that Brazil would be named as hosts in a future World Cup if they lost on purpose. This theory holds that Ronaldo didn't want to go through with this plan, and hence removed himself from the squad. But when he was told that he might lose his $80 million sponsorship with Nike, he changed his mind and decided to play after all. Nike responded the next day, saying that they never placed any added pressure on any of the Brazilian players, but many people still have their doubts about what actually happened that day. Number 3. The famous New Zealand pop singer, Lord, became famous when she released her debut album Pure Heroin, with her first single, Royals, reaching number 1 on the US Billboard 100. The album resulted in the singer receiving two Grammys, and since then her career has soared to new heights. But surprisingly, she's also the subject of a conspiracy theory that, depending on what sources you read, claims she's either much older or much younger than she claims to be. The fact of the matter is that she's currently 27 years old, but this rumor has persisted since 2014 when she was just 17 years old. One of the first instances of this theory came about when she stated that a certain event resonated with her as a teenager, to which she quickly added, I mean, I still am a teenager causing many people to believe that this was a slip of the tongue from someone who was actually much older. She then made matters worse, probably in jest, when she stated during an interview that her name was Ella and that she was actually 45 years old. But it is thought that this theory started when a woman named Emma Carmichael attempted to get a copy of the singer's birth certificate. When she was handed the document, it stated that she was born in 1996, which is correct, but people on the internet decided that this was impossible since they thought she looked closer to 30 or even 40-something years old. To support their theory, they pointed out that the subject matter in her songs is too mature to be produced by someone of her claimed age. These included the subject of climate change and other pertinent events that most people wouldn't associate with someone that young. When faced with the evidence of her birth certificate, they suggested that this document could have easily been altered, though no one is certain why she would lie about her age, since her music is what made her famous. 
In 2019, she announced that her upcoming album would be delayed due to the passing of her dog. And once again, people started speculating about her age, since she'd been less active on her social media accounts than she had in the past. But the singer explained that this was the result of her rethinking the way that she behaved, and that it was a conscious decision on her part to keep a slightly lower profile. The truth is that Lord is 27 years old at present, and she's never attempted to hide her real age from her fans, since there's seemingly no reason for her to do so. Number 2. If you've read the Dan Brown book, The Da Vinci Code, you'll be familiar with the theory that certain symbols on American architecture and some of these structures themselves are part of a larger picture that's obscured from members of the public. This is, of course, a fictional story, but it's led to some interesting and sometimes outlandish conspiracy theories, many of which are still very much alive today. A similar conspiracy theory centers on the American dollar bill and the symbols that can be found in its design the most prominent being the Eye of Providence, which features a pyramid above which is a floating eye. The symbolism here is easy to misinterpret, especially by a suspicious mind, since many theories exist about the pyramids, but also about triangles, and not least of all the eye, which can be seen by some as all-seeing. But this theory is helped along by the fact that the Eye of Providence is also present in other areas, including on churches and Masonic buildings that can be found all around the world, not just in the US. There's no doubt that the inclusion of a disembodied eye on a bill was a strange choice, since most people would not have known what it was meant to represent, and it's been thought to allude to something similar to the Big Brother element of the novel 1984, in which people are constantly monitored by an authoritarian figure. It's also been suggested that it has something to do with the Freemasons, or that it's the symbol of the Illuminati, a group of people who are said to control the world as we know it from behind a veil of power. In truth, the eye was first used as a Christian symbol that represented the all-seeing eye of God. It suggested that he was always watching over his followers, and that this was done in a compassionate way. It's also been used in another context in Christianity, as it served as a symbol of God's benevolence towards mankind meaning that he only wants us to prosper under his watchful gaze from heaven. But conspiracy theorists have claimed that the eye actually represents the formation of a new world order that seeks to control the world for its own benefit, and those that it has chosen to be successful and wealthy. As for the pyramid, it was designed to represent America as a country, while it was still developing, and a closer look at its base reveals the Roman numerals MDCCLXXVI, which is the number 1776, the year in which the country was founded. Some conspiracy theorists have likened the Eye of Providence to the Egyptian symbol for the Eye of Horus, but that symbol is supposed to represent the eye of a falcon and a human eye. Egyptian mythology holds that Horus lost his eyes in battle, and that he was later able to heal them when he was aided by Thoth, the god of reckoning, learning, and the moon. One would think that if the government wanted to hide these symbols, they would have made them much smaller and much harder to find on the dollar bill. But conspiracy theorists counter this argument by suggesting that the best place to hide something is in plain sight. It's impossible to convince conspiracy theorists that these symbols aren't in any way meant to deceive anyone, since they're usually already skeptical of anything that the government does. And such a strange symbol can only be fuel for conspiracy fire that still rages on today. Number 1. If you've done even a small amount of research into conspiracy theories, you'll almost certainly have come across some of the wildest among them, including those that claim that the world is either flat or hollow, that the Earth is enclosed in a massive dome, or that the Moon doesn't really exist. Most people see these suggestions as entertaining at most, and don't subscribe to most of these theories, since they rarely make sense. But this hasn't stopped some people from coming up with even more outlandish claims. One of these is the suggestion that the mountains that we see all over the world aren't actually mountains. Most of us would immediately dismiss this claim, but quite bizarrely, there are thousands of people who have bought into it. It would seem, according to some sources, that this theory was put forward by those who believe the world is flat, better known as flat earthers. This theory should be easy to debunk, since we see trees all around us every day, but when it comes to a conspiracy theory, it's rarely that easy. Some flat earthers have stated that what we believe to be trees, no matter how big or tall they are, are merely the remnants of the original trees that once stood on Earth, and that today's trees are just saplings that were created by the actual trees. The theory is said to stem from a YouTube video, posted by a man who hails from Crimea, and since it was uploaded, 
it's received hundreds of thousands of views, suggesting that many people found it intriguing, though many more likely watched it merely for its entertainment value. The video has since been deleted from the platform, as has the man's account, possibly because he would have received a lot of negative feedback about his claims. But the theory that he suggested is still very much alive and well. In the video, he claims that Earth's biosphere was severely damaged by a cataclysmic event a very long time ago, and as a result, the Earth's real forests were completely decimated, leaving only the trunks of the trees behind. These trees, according to him, and those who subscribe to the theory, would have been bigger and taller than any of us could possibly imagine. But we can get a fair idea of how large they would have been since the mountains around the world are the remnants of their trunks that broke off during the cataclysmic event, he claims. But he says that we can also see these remnants in buttes, plateaus, and flat-top mountains, the latter being the closest to a tree stump in its appearance. He adds that some examples of these are Uluru in Australia, the Giant's Causeway in Northern Ireland, and Wyoming's famous Devil's Tower, which is also said to have certain powers. He then placed these images next to those of actual tree stumps, and challenged viewers to find a difference between them. Furthermore, he claims that all rock found on our planet is the remnant of these massive trees, and that we only think of it as rock since we never knew about the trees. One skeptic of this theory pointed out that they find it strange that some flat earthers believe these claims, since such huge structures would surely have wreaked havoc on a flat planet, since they would have all been the same size, resulting in a huge imbalance. Nevertheless, many people are adamant that this theory is true, and they'll not be dissuaded no matter what proof they're presented with. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked this video, be sure to hit that like button. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell to keep up to date with all of our future uploads. But my name is Ty Knotts, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.